Today we're going to be talking about completing the application performance monitoring picture with App Dynamics end user monitoring. Uh, we're going to talk about how this uh, really gets you to understand what your customers are really experiencing um, out there with your apps. So a little about us. Uh, so we are JDS Australia. One of our key areas that we work in is application monitoring. So with our customers, we select, help them select and deploy industry-leading APM tools, um, such as AppDynamics being one of the major ones we work with. And we also help them operate these tools, support them, um, help them implement um, and get them up and running uh, across a number of enterprise clients. And really our focus here is we want to help our clients make their apps perform great. I am Hamish Goodwin. I'm one of our senior consultants here. And I'm also our practice lead for AppDynamics. So, as you're about to find out, I'm a big fan of App Dynamics, and I can happily talk to you about it for the rest of the afternoon, but we'll uh, try and get this wrapped up <laughs> in about half an hour or so. So, what are we going to talk about? First thing we're going to cover is a little bit of the monitoring story so far, um, and why we want to measure our customers' experience. We're going to talk about how App Dynamics gives you end-to-end -end visibility of your user experience in real time. And we're going to talk about how App Dynamics helps you to know that all of your apps and services are up right now um, at all times uh, in real time. If you have any questions, please do feel free to send them through in the in the chat window that you can see in your GoToMeeting uh, box there. We will uh, have a little time at the end to, to answer those. Likewise, uh, if you have any questions later on or if you want to talk to us more about it, please feel free to get in touch uh, via email or give us a call. Uh, we won't have them to, to talk to you there. So customer experience, why do we want to measure this? Why do we want to put in a monitoring tool that can help you understand this? So firstly, and a big one here is customers won't wait for you anymore. Did your site not load? Did it take too long to load? Not fast enough? Your customer's probably already back on Facebook. They've already had your competitor's advert uh, pushed into their face. Um, they've used cookies there to see what they're into and they're already off to someone else's website. So really these days, you can't afford to have sites that don't respond, show errors, uh, don't help your customers get things done uh, in the way they want to do them. Another major one there is your competitors are watching. So companies now are, are monitoring each other. How are their competitors doing? Are they better? And trying to edge out extra performance to make sure customers stay with them rather than competitors. That means staying with your competitors. Another major thing there is we want to translate performance measurements into business outcomes. So things like we want to measure and justify our investments in making performance better. Do we maybe spend some money on our infrastructure? Do we spend some time optimizing or tuning apps um, so we can measure the impact of that? Did it make our customers have a better experience? Uh, did it improve revenue? Did it, did it include conversions, etc.? And we want to inform our business. We want to make them really understand that the applications that you manage, the ones that are, are very important to you, I want them to understand that performance is important to them. Uh, performance makes a difference. So a little about the monitoring story so far. Um, we have come to, come to with some of the tools to date. So traditionally there's been a, a focus on various different IT solos and the systems that they manage. So things like servers, middleware, databases, um, the network operating systems. There are various tools that can take care of each of, the, each of these, usually in a disparate manner. Maybe you have something that looks at the infrastructure. What is the CPU doing? What is the memory doing? Uh, another tool that looks at the network. What is that doing? Uh, another tool that looks at databases. Uh, another tool that looks at, um, at logs, other things. And often these tools might be used by different teams, different offices. You have people you know, spread around the country. Maybe you even have outsources in your organization where some bits, say maybe the server and the, the iOS is taken care of by one uh, outsource, uh, outsource the organization, the database is taken care of by another, and the network another, yet again. And so we have all these technical metrics coming from different tools, perhaps across different teams. We can add things in like maybe we've got log tools, maybe we've got different tools that do mobile monitoring, different tools that look at the website, maybe different synthetic tools. But what does this really mean? If something goes wrong in one of these, if, if, the, if the network there uh, has showing some kind of red alert there, what does that mean? Did, were the customers impacted? Did we lose revenue? What is the root cause here? What was the issue? When the database ran out of space, what happened then? Did the customers notice? 
Did any checkout transactions fail? Did we, did we fail to make a sale? Did we cause an error for our customer? So more recently, we may have to answer some of these questions um, by looking at our applications that, of course, run over top of most of this, this uh, infrastructure. And so this is where AppDynamics performance monitoring comes in. So now we can look at, across our applications, what was happening across all of this. Where were their bottlenecks? Where were the issues? Where were the errors? Uh, we've been able to get to the root cause through triage quite a lot faster than the past. However, at this stage, we're still looking within our data center here. So you know, with, with APM, we can see requests coming into our servers. We can see them going through various different tiers. We can trace them down to databases and things like that. We can see what servers are doing. But we're still only looking within our data center. And so that's not really the, the full picture of, of what a customer is going to experience. So in reality, our customers are out here somewhere. They might have different browsers, different devices, different versions of devices, different versions of the operating system, different versions of the, of the app that they're running. There might be different networks. We obviously have the internet. They might be on a, a wide area network. Maybe you've got uh, clients or, or users that are out in the field. Um, with private WAN links there. You've got 3G, 4G, Wi-Fi. Maybe they're using VPNs. Maybe they're using different carriers. Maybe they're using Telstra, Vodafone, Optus. Uh, different users, different carriers, all in different places. And maybe they're spread possibly around the world. Maybe you've got people in all sorts of different countries accessing your apps. So how do we know what that customer really experienced? When they're on Wi-Fi, what was their experience? When they're on 4G, what was their experience? When they're on Chrome versus Firefox or iOS versus Android, what was their experience? So this is where AppDynamics and user monitoring comes in. So we get rid of that line and we bring EUM in here. And what we're able to do now is see the complete end-to-end -end picture by measuring right from the perspective of your users and your customers and see all the way through into your backends what the performance was, what their experience was, and we get much better visibility that way. So how do we do this? So with AppDynamics EUM, we install smart agents into your web or mobile applications. So these agents, they're able to gather uh, quite rich performance information as well as things like error information and, and crash information from your apps in real time. And then the other thing they do is automatically inject a unique ID and that allows us to trace requests all the way from those devices or browsers into your backend systems and across the different tiers there, right down to things like SQL calls, uh, individual servers, calls out to uh, remote APIs and such. So this really helps us to understand the complete picture and when we see issues or, or bottlenecks or, or errors, it helps us to very quickly triage, diagnose and resolve where those issues are occurring uh, without having to rely on talking to many different teams and possibly many different places, as I mentioned earlier. The great thing about this is that means all of this comes into one unified monitoring platform. So all the information from what was happening in the browser, what was happening in the mobile app, what was happening in your backends for your different tiers, perhaps the web servers, ESVs, all those kind of things, and what was happening with the infrastructure, what was a, what was the server doing, what was the CPU um, at that time. This all comes into a single browser-based plane of glass. So you see all of this in real time from one place across all of your applications, across all of your users, across all of the different platforms that they're using. So this really gets us great visibility into what really happened for your customer. When they are loading your site, when they are doing various activities or business transactions on your site, what really happened for them? So in user monitoring, what are some of our, our key goals here? First thing, we want to see the real performance of the browser and mobile apps as the customer experiences them in real time and over time. So we want to see what the customer actually experienced. What was their load time? How long did the page take to load? Did they experience any errors? Were there network issues that take you know, a long time to make a connection? Uh, perhaps with issues with uh, content distribution networks, those kind of things. We also want to see that over time. Uh, we want to understand how is our performance tracking over time? Is it, is it getting better as we make uh, investments in performance? Uh, has it become worse? Um, have, we, have we introduced issues over time? So the history there is also very important. 
We also want to understand the experience for the various demographics that I was talking about earlier. So things like different regions of the world, different cities, different uh, counties, different countries, different devices. Um, we've got Android and iOS users out there, lots of different uh, models of those, particularly Android. People using different browsers from different operating systems, Chrome, Firefox, etc., uh, Windows, Mac, maybe even Linux. They've got different carriers even, like I said before, different carriers, different methods of uh, connection, 4G, 3G, etc. And so we want to understand the difference between all of those and how those have an impact on our customer experience in real time and again over time as so we can see how those change over time. We very much want to correlate that end user experience back into the performance of your back end systems. So it's very well if we can understand that you know, a page took maybe 10 seconds to load on the, on the browser. But what does that mean in terms of how much of that time was taken in the network, how much of that time was taken in your back-end you know, web tier, how much was in the ESV, how much was in the database. So it's very important that we trace, um, that we tag and trace those transactions all the way through into your back-end systems so that we can really quickly uh, triage and understand uh, potential issues or, or make improvements there. Another thing we want to do is we really want to understand our customer's journey through your apps. So this is something to do with session monitoring and the, the rich analytics built into Ad Dynamics. So we can understand when your customer visits your site, what kind of activities are they doing? What is their flow through your various different business transactions? What are they looking up? What kind of activities do they do there? That's very important. And ultimately, and this is a key goal for us uh, as an Ad Dynamics partner, is that we want to help you to make your customer experience great. Uh, we want to help you with these kind of tools to help you improve, help you maintain, um, help you ensure that your experience is great all the time. So some of the things that we might want to know about, uh, and we might want to see these kind of things in real time. So where, where are we losing customers? When our customers come in through the front door, how many of them are translating into sales? How many of them are adding items to carts? How many items are, are actually being checked out? Um, what are some of the, the product categories? What are the what are your different customer types, your different tiers, those kind of things? We want to understand that. We really want to understand revenue. Perhaps we want to break that down by different different cities, different types of devices, different uh, versions, those kind of things. And, and obviously, an important one down the bottom left there is understanding the performance, the, the response times of your apps. Uh, how fast are they performing? So, what if we could do all of this in real time? So, I'm going to switch now just briefly to a, a bit of a demo uh, in an actual app dynamics. Uh, environment, and so we have a look at some of the dashboards that EUM provides. We have a look at some of the uh, ways that we troubleshoot and diagnose and triage uh, this kind of uh, these kind of apps in real time, um, and we have a look at session monitoring there as well. So let me just switch over here. So here we go. So here's uh, App Dynamics. This is a, a demo instance. Here, uh, immediately we can see we've got our uh, browser-based uh, dashboard here and so right away off the bat we can see uh, we've got a geographic dashboard there, we can see we're looking at different devices there, we can see for well, this particular demo app our heaviest use is coming from the United States but we do have requests you know, pretty much all around the world there, you can see that immediately, get an overview of, of what our users are experiencing in general, so you can see here both the, uh, the real user um, response time there um, and we have some FedEx here which we'll talk about uh, in a little while. And you can see things were broken down by different devices, different types there, different countries, uh, requests over time, various things there. So I'll jump now into a look at some browser snapshots. So because we're tracing all of these transactions all the way from that browser and mobile app right through into our back end, this allows us to see what we call snapshots. So this allows us to get very rich information uh, about what happened in a particular request. And uh, I'm going to apply a couple of filters here to give you an idea of how we might use this. So I'm going to look for some very slow transactions. I just want to see you know, maybe are some of our users experiencing some slowness. So I'll search for those there. All right, so we already see you know, we have a, a reasonable number of slow requests here, which is maybe not so good. You know, I don't know if it's immediately telling us that there's some slow slowness there. Let me bring in here the uh, the front end time as well. So that's something that we want to understand. What is what are our requests doing in terms of the front end time? So let's order it by there. So now we can see there's some of our transactions here. It looks like our, our view cart 
uh, and send items action there. So this is a, a bit of a, a checkout action there. So that appears to be performing fairly slowly and causing us some issues. You can see immediately various different devices that are occurring there. Um, and these, all of these entries here are actual transactions that your users are, are performing. So these are captures of real live application requests um, that have been performed. So let's drill into one of these here and see what was going on. So here we go. So here's a, a browser snapshot. So this is a capture of what actually happened in a particular user's browser. If we jump down bottom here for a moment there. We're actually able to, to collect some information about the users and what they were doing um, at the time. So in this case is our, uh, our fake Richard Branson here. He's obviously a, a keen customer on our e-commerce site here. He was doing a, uh, a add to cart uh, action there. Um, we can see we're also collecting some revenue information there. So we're saying he's got $181 worth of items in his cart right now. So it's a reasonable value transaction there. And so we can see that transaction took 33 seconds. So that's probably not such a good experience for Mr. Branson there. Um, if you wanted to wait 30 seconds, there's a good chance that you might have switched off and gone somewhere else by now. So immediately here we get an idea of what the breakdown was between what happened in the browser and what happened in the back end. So a key part of this here is we can see immediately that well, actually 32 seconds of that was in our back end. Our, our server took 32.7 seconds there to respond. So it's, uh, it's interesting. But we do also have uh, a reasonable amount of time uh, in resource fetching here. So resource fetching is going and downloading images, uh, JavaScript and the like. So that's interesting for us to look at there. So let's have a, a quick look at that resource information which we can jump across here. So we loaded a bunch of images, a little bit of JavaScript and CSS there. And we go down here and we have a, a detailed breakdown of all the different things that we loaded. So all of this looks, looks pretty good. We can uh, click on the list, we can see uh, it's actually a lot of this was fetched from cache, so that's good, our, our CDN's working right there. And uh, if we scroll down a little further, we can see hmm, there's this fb.png here that took a long time to load. So that looks like it wasn't served from cache for some reason. In fact, it took us 560 milliseconds to load that, that small image. So that's probably something we want to feedback to our, our front end team to look at as to why wasn't it cached, um, should it be put in a, a content distribution network of some sort, because uh, that's having an impact on our customer experience there. So we can jump back in now and we can see, well, a lot of the time was taken there in our back end and what we've also been able to do is correlate this browser snapshot into a snapshot for what happened in our back end. So we'll dive down into that. Bring that one up there. So immediately here, for this real transaction, so this is a, an actual transaction that a user did. We've traced it across the various things running in our data center here. You see we came into an e-commerce server, we did some things with an inventory service, an order processing service, there's a couple of databases there that we did work with, um, there's a couple of queues that we, that we worked with as well. And we can see there, uh, right away off the bat down the left hand side, we can see where all of that time was taken. So there's a, there's a line of code there, um, you can see there was 32 seconds there, taking on this raise PO uh, item there. So immediately we can share this with uh, our application teams, understand uh, what was actually going on, look at that particular system there, and dive in and, and resolve it quickly. So that's browser snapshots, and that's how we can see very quickly uh, where issues are occurring, where time is taken, right from the end user, right down into our back end systems. So let me uh, jump back out of that there. Final thing I'm going to show you for now in the, uh, in the browser end user monitoring area is our session monitoring capability. So sessions are where we can understand for a particular user uh, when they came onto our site, what are the different activities that they did. Uh, so we can trace across different pages that they loaded, different activities that they did, uh, how long that took for them. So bear with me a moment there while that loads up. So in this case we're looking at our uh, another important customer for us, Mr. Larry Allison. Uh, a repeat customer for us, very important. And he has uh, loaded a, a few different sessions here. It looks like he's been jetting around in his fighter jet there. He's uh, been to all sorts of different cities, so he's using lots of different browsers there, so very good on you, Mr. Allison. So let's bring up one of these and we can see what he did, the, what he did there in that session. So right here we can see uh, for Mr. Allison in the session, He's uh, done a couple of different pages there. Let's just expand that one out. So he's done some view items here. He's looked at various different items. That one performed okay. You can see that 
He also did a uh, some add to carts there. The add to cart it was a bit slow. It took eight seconds to add to cart that time. And then he came to do his standing items. This is part of the checkout process um, for this particular app. You can see this one performed very, very slowly. So it took 47 seconds uh, to load that one. We can drill uh, further down there into things like what the resources were, what did he load. Um, so now we can understand where he was, what he was doing, what the activity was, and we get to capture this information across all of our users so we can really understand uh, what our customers' journeys are, what they're doing, and what their experiences are. So that's the end of the demo section for the browser EUM part there. I'll briefly show you the mobile side there. So it's, it's fairly similar. Uh, one of the new things we get with the mobile side is you have to understand crashes of your mobile app. So you can see here immediately we can see crash information uh, for different devices there. A lot of it's fairly similar though in, in terms of we get the breakdown by different geographic regions. Uh, we can see similar snapshots of, of network requests. We get to see sessions as well there. Uh, and so we get that rich information right from the mobile app. You can see across different versions, different carriers here. So this is a, this is a US based demo app so we can see AT&T and various different carriers there. Uh, different connection types, Wi-Fi, 4G, etc. devices. Um, so we get that breakdown uh, across all those different things there, which helps us to really understand what performance is like across those different demographics. All right, so that's browser and mobile uh, EUM in terms of a, a demo. So let me just back to my step for a moment. I'm going to talk to you briefly about the synthetics now. So another important aspect of, of what the end user experience is, is making sure that all of the time that our end user experience is great. So in some cases, we might not have uh, customers using our site from all locations at all times of the day. Some people might not actually be up at 3 a.m. using our site uh, from New Zealand or from the UK or from somewhere else. So what we're on the sand is, is our site actually working right now? Is it working for them right now? Could they jump on the website right now and perform a transaction? Um, and is it working from all those different locations that we talked about? So this is where Synthetics comes in. And so we really want to measure performance and availability from multiple different global locations. We want to check on how those various sites or services, even if we don't have APM uh, in the back end, we want to understand how those different sites are working. Are they working? Are they available right now? And this allows us to be proactive and respond to issues before your customers are experiencing them. So we can know, is the site down? Is it down from a certain location? Or is it down in total? Uh, before your customers try and access it. So this is very important. We'll get a very quick look at how this looks in that dynamics itself. So if I jump back into our EWIM site here and go down to our synthetic monitoring here. So the way this works is we have robots that are that are running in the cloud from various locations around the world, um, and we have scripts that we write uh, to simulate what a user do. So perhaps they do a login, perhaps they add some items to a cart, uh, do a checkout. And then we run that periodically uh, from those different locations to understand what the performance is, is it available, and uh, how's, the, how's your experience. So you can see here we get a very similar breakdown of all the different requests that the, that the robots have performed. We can see the experience in there, the different locations, whether OK was an issue, the, the read explanation there is obviously uh, there's a bit of an issue there. In the case we can see for that particular location at that time, we had a timeout there and we received an error. So that is something we want to alert on and we can jump in and figure out why that is happening uh, before we get complaints from our customers. So we get the same kind of information there as well. We get a breakdown of all different things that are occurring there, all different uh, resources that were loaded. And we see that from all those different locations that we're monitoring from. All right, so that is synthetics. So why app dynamics? So, a few key points here on why we think it's a great tool to help you deliver your customer experience in a, in a great way. So the big thing there is they've had consistently massive growth. Um, they've grown hugely over the past few years and they've had consistent growth year on year. And in fact, in for financial year 15, they had 100% growth um, in their bookings there. And they're continually investing there. They're, every, every six months or so, there's a, there's a new version with major new features. Um, so they're really expanding and uh, growing their capability. They're consistently in the lead uh, in the eyes of 
most of the major analysts there, like consistently for Gartner in the, in the top right hand uh, corner of the major quadrant there for APM, um, and consistently with the analysts, uh, they are they're winning a lot of uh, kudos there. They have low application infrastructure overhead. So this is one of the key things for AppDynamics and it's a bit of a differentiator against some of the other tools out there um, and that they are very much focused on keeping the overhead both on your application uh, very low, but also the, the overhead on your infrastructure in terms of keeping the, the, the cost of running AppDynamics, the, the amount of servers and things involved very low. They have a, a, a single controller server that can handle thousands of the smart application agents um, from that single box. And the intelligence in these uh, agents helps to keep that impact to your applications consistently low, even if you have changing or very high volume environments. So that's very important. They have a very rapid time to value. Um, so this is a, a thing that we love is that we've been able to literally give customers uh, all this information and visibility, in some cases in a matter of a few hours, we can have the, the agents deployed, the, the platform up and running, and we get that visibility very, very quickly. So that's, that's a really great thing. You have a choice of hosting options there. There's a there's a, a mix of being able to host this on-premise yourself, being able to use the AppDynamics cloud for some of it, um, or a mixture of both. So it's particularly important for end-user monitoring where uh, you can have perhaps an on-premise controller and, and use some of the AppDynamics cloud infrastructure for the, the EUM parts that are involved there. And one of the key key things on the slide is the customer renewal rate in the bottom left hand corner there. This speaks great volumes about the success that our customers have had with AppDynamics um, and that they've got an over 90% customer renewal rate. So that really speaks volumes about how happy customers are and how much value they've been able to get out of the tool. So finally here we have a YJDS. So this is one of our, our key areas, application monitoring. So we do a lot of work in this space. We've been doing a large number of uh, AppDynamics deployments here. We've been working with a bunch of medium and large enterprises as well as government clients here. Uh, we've had a lot of success working both in a production environment, which is really greatly suited, but also in, in non-production environments, uh, helping them with testing, performance testing, um, helping them get a great customer experience right from the get-go. We are certified enablement partners. So in fact, we actually have the most qualified uh, number of partners uh, qualified consultants in Australia, so we're very much proud of that. Um, got a bunch of really great guys uh, working across a number of clients with doing AppDynamics work. And in general, we have le industry leading exp expertise in application performance testing and monitoring tools, so we do a lot of work in this space, um, and as a lot of you know, uh, we have great expertise in this area. So thank you very much for your time here. We're uh, pretty much right on schedule there. Um, if you have any questions, please do feel free to, uh, to send them through on the GoToMeeting there. And uh, if you have any uh, need for some further information, we'd love to get in touch with you. We're very happy to do some, some uh, demonstrations for you in this area. We're happy to help you to do a proof of value where we come and install the, the AppDynamics agents in your actual environment to help you understand what you're going to get out of the tool and show you that it's, it's going to give you that great visibility. Um, our contact details are there. If you, Want to get an email, or if you if you have an existing account manager, please please do have a chat. That'd be great.